has been entertained, at least on social media. What are your thoughts on the idea of moving Patrick Sertan? Mm. Avenue Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Amir Farrow, with my co-host, Dorian Lopez. And as you guys could tell, I would like to welcome today's guest. He's a sports talk host for KOA Colorado, this Broncos radio network. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Edwards. We had an episode with you, I believe, a few weeks ago. We had a few issues with the audio and stuff on the recording, but it's good to have you uh, back on the show. Got everything situated. Ryan, thank you for being on the show. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me back. It is uh, very nice to actually talk to Ryan for the first time. I actually uh, remember when I was in class that one day a few months ago and I got that notification that Ryan Edwards had followed me on Twitter. I thought it was like one of the best days of my life. So now I'm talking to Ryan now uh, on this pod now on this episode is going to be great. So thanks for joining us. Uh, it's very kind. You give me too much credit, but I appreciate it, man. Thanks. So we got a lot to talk about today. Uh, the NFL draft quarterback is the main topic of Broncos news right now. Um, Sean Payton, George Payton, Greg Penner just talked a lot about that position at the NFL owners meeting. Um, a lot of new rule changes that we want to talk about. But first, how do you feel, Ryan, about how the Broncos have addressed the quarterback position thus far this offseason? They cut Russell Wilson. They showed some preliminary interest in Sam Darnold. I saw a little bit of stuff about Zach Wilson, Mac Jones, but nothing ever transpired with any of those guys. Um, thank goodness they didn't trade for Justin Fields or else I would have had to have had something on my forehead on the show. Um, but <laughs> how, do, how do you feel about how the Broncos have uh, addressed the quarterback or, or I should say not addressed the quarterback position so far this offseason? Yeah, I was uh, I was really rooting for you there. You and Ben, uh, I was afraid for you guys because, you know, Sean, Sean is – He's aware of that stuff. He watches yeah, yeah. Twitter. He reads the articles. And, you know, all of a sudden you guys are out there like, I will, you know, whatever. Put, put, like, I, I can't, I'm not going to repeat what you said, but I just say like, you know, what, what several people out there thought. And, and, and you're right. I mean, there was just no reason whatsoever to go to Justin Fields. That would have been a terrible fit here in Denver. Uh, as much as a lot of Broncos fans get excited about him or even just football fans. I think fantasy football fans really love Justin Fields. I know that I, as a fantasy football player myself, uh, didn't like having him on my team because uh, he gets a lot of rushing yards. But, you know, to play the quarterback needs more than that. Uh, to your question, you know, I, I'm actually kind of okay with it as long as, it, again, the plan still seems to be the draft. And that's what I've wanted from the very beginning. Uh, the last thing I wanted to see was the Broncos heavily invest in uh, a quarterback like Jimmy Garoppolo and then say, well, we don't need to go to the draft now. We got our quarterback. We're good, you know. And that that's what I was, that was so afraid of. Uh, the Broncos did that uh, many years ago with John Elway here as a GM when they invested in Case Keenum or Joe Flacco, depending on how you want to you know paint it, right? That was a trade. But Case Keenum is the same thing. I said at the time, okay, fine. Hey, add Case Keenum. That's great. You got to go into the draft. You still have to be looking at quarterbacks, and they decided not to. And certainly, you're know, putting all the eggs in the basket of Case Keenum was an abject disaster. Uh, you know, you moved on from him for his contract even you know, kind of came close to finishing. So uh, that that was, for me, the, the biggest point. Um, I'm actually okay. I, the fact that they didn't ha add anybody, you know, some people get a little bit nervous about that. I'd, I'd rather not add anybody just to add somebody. And yeah. I think that's what they've made a focal point is we're not just going to add people to add people. Uh, we're going to add people very, you know, specifically for specific roles. And in, in the case of quarterback, they feel like, you know, with Jared Sidham, they have already that guy. There's no reason to add – uh, somebody that's a comparable level when you have one of those guys. Now, maybe they add a Ryan Tannehill. I would probably say that's not a great idea either, but maybe they add Ryan Tannehill. Who knows? Uh, but the focus seems to be on the draft, and that that is important to me. How did you feel about the whole Russell Wilson fallout and how that experiment ended? Because a lot of people are still going to bat for the guy, even though he's on a completely different team now. Yeah, I mean, it was expected, right? We, we knew it was coming. We knew that uh, – that, Sean Payton just wasn't going to work with Russell Wilson. And I mean, you don't, you don't come to him mid season asking for a change of the contract. And then, uh, you know, you bench him right before the end of the season, even though you say it's for a spark in the offense. So I think we all kind of knew that wasn't exactly the complete truth. And that's fine. I mean, again, uh, in, in the end, uh, the organization has empowered Sean Payton to fix the Broncos and that's what he's trying to do. And, and so we kind of have to roll with this, right? I mean, uh, not everybody loves uh, what Sean Payton, his delivery. They they don't love sort of his uh, his style. Sometimes he could be be a bit antagonistic. But, you know, in the end, if, if he wins football games, I think people are going to get on board. And right now you, you want to give him a chance 
to to do this in his vision and he has won a lot of football games so i guess we'll, we'll kind of ride with it um you know for me i don't know I, i've been getting a lot of crap on the radio show about it because i have been saying that i i'm, I'm just I, i'm not i'm not cool with russ like i'm not in the space of i'm rooting for russ i hope he does well personally i think he's great uh you know super nice guy was always very good with the media that kind of thing but man, if he would have played better in 2022 when he got here, if he would, if he'd have brought his end of the bargain to the Broncos, he'd still be here. Nathaniel Hackett probably would still be here. You wouldn't be resetting at coaches left and right all the time. Uh, you wouldn't be resetting at, at your overall team direction and culture all the time. Um, but he didn't. He showed up, and he wasn't the guy. He wasn't as advertised. And uh, now he's gone. Uh, Nathaniel Hackett's gone. Um, there's possible more changes, right? So uh, that that for me, like, I'm not quite ready to say, you know, good luck, Russ. I hope you do well. Not quite ready for that. Um, but in the end, I probably will get there at some point. And, and like I said, this was expected. So to stay on the topic of quarterbacks and now Sean Payton, we all know Bill Parcells' mentor for Sean Payton. Those guys are linked forever. And uh, Bill Parcells' golden rule was looking to the draft for quarterbacks they had to at least have one golden rule, and that was at least 23 wins in college. So now they had a lot of qualities, what they look at, but that was their golden rule. And we know Payne always follows Parcells, and he has very similar philosophies in what they do. What quarterback fit those qualities for Sean Payne and for Denver? I mean, well, right off the bat, you say J.J. McCarthy, right? I mean, that's that's the guy. Uh, only one loss in his collegiate career is, is really pretty impressive. Um, and, you know, the, we, we know that winning in college doesn't always translate to the NFL. I mean, the, the best players in college uh, make up such a small percentage uh, of what ends up going to the NFL, you know, and, and, and oftentimes they're guys from really, really impressive programs like Alabama, right? We had Jerry Judy, had Pat Sertan here. Uh, those, guys, those guys didn't even come close to, to winning uh, seasons yet, right? I mean, they won games, but not uh, have a winning record. So, um, I, I'd say that that would be right off the bat. I mean, you know, you're not going to be in range for Caleb Williams, who, who also did win quite a bit of games um, right. at uh, Oklahoma and USC. Um, Jaden Daniels feels like a bit of a long shot, but man, I tell you what, uh, you know, there's just something, you know, they're going to do a private workout with him. They're not, they're not completely writing that one off, which I think is fascinating. Um, and then, uh, you know, and then I, I, I've always been a Drake May fan. I know he had a rough year this last year, but I, I, I just think that he's, He's pro ready. I mean, maybe some people call him a little bit more of a project. I don't. I don't necessarily see that. I think he's he's got all the tools to with the right coaching to hit the ground running. Um, and then yeah, the JJ McCarthy. Just I mean, he's he's that guy. So um, I mean, it's certainly a very exciting quarterback class. We've been here before, though, right? That's the cautionary tale. We've been here before. Where we're very excited about the quarterbacks at the top of the draft, and we know that the returns most of the time are not very good on those quarterbacks. You know, maybe maybe two out of five. Uh, tend to hit um, but it, it, you, you always got to chase it um, especially when you're in this division with Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert uh, especially when you're in the AFC uh, considering all the talent and quarterback uh, in the AFC I think you just you're always chasing it um, and I, I really like to see the Broncos chase after one in this draft so which quarterback prospect do you feel is most likely Sean Payne's target I know we don't have a lot to go over there do or a lot to you know go off of but and they're keeping everything so enclosed. But if you had to like choose one that you feel it's kind of up in your mind a little bit that Sean Payton is eyeing, which one would you say that is? Yeah, I mean, I think we talked a lot about JJ McCarthy. I mean, it's just he's sort of made up of that stuff, right? And and his his style. I mean, you're looking for quarterbacks that are highly accurate. Uh, you're looking at quarterbacks that can throw over the middle, um, and you know they, they they can operate from the pocket. I mean, that was he he said those things. I'm not even just making that stuff up. He said those things. And if you watch Drew Brees, you know exactly what that looks like. And he's looking for his next Drew Brees. He's looking for a quarterback that that he can, uh, you know, see the same, same things, that they see the same things. And that's why Russ just didn't work. Uh, you know, it was too too much of the street ball uh, style, uh, according to Sean. Uh, wants a quarterback that can that can really function well from the pocket. So I, I think J.J. McCarthy makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, Bo Nix, I know that, that there's some questions about, you know, his upside and, and his long-term – ability but Bo Nix the most accurate quarterback in college football right 77 north 77 percent I mean that's hard to 
hard to deny. And I, I think he would fit really well. I, I, I like Michael Penix Jr.'s arm talents, but I worry about, again, his some of his ability to throw over the middle of the field. Didn't really do a lot of that at Washington. Uh, his durability, obviously, those questions continue to come up. So, I mean, if we're going in the quarterbacks that I think are going to be in range, those are the guys that I think that are going to be in the conversation. Um, they're going to draft a quarterback. That's what's so exciting about this, right? They're going to draft one. I also think Michael Pratt uh, need, needs to not be overlooked out of Tulane. I think you could probably get him early day three. Um, but again, that'd be more more project style. You're not drafting Michael Pratt with the expectation of starting him uh, week one. He'd be in a competition, but Jared Sidham would probably win that battle. But any of those other quarterbacks, I think you sort of expect them to beat out Jared Sidham. I love that you bring up Michael Pratt. That's a fascinating discussion that we've been having for a while. But quickly on Bo Nix, do you think that all the J.J. McCarthy love to Denver, especially on social media, is it just steering attention away from Bo Nix because maybe that is Peyton's guy at 12? I mean, very well could be, right? And that's how he's operated in the past. So I, I, I agree with you in that that regard. I mean, you know, the Patrick Mahomes story that we know, you know, like he, he they did a lot of work on Patrick Mahomes. They were prepared to take him. And they, these are stories that, you know, everybody says after the fact they were prepared to take Patrick Mahomes, but, you know, they were right there. They were one pick away. Um, you know, they, they ended up with a good player in Mar Marcus Lattimore, but, you know, they, they said that even with Drew Brees there, they were prepared to take him. That that was the guy they had, they'd done a lot of very quiet research on. Yeah. Um, and then when the chiefs traded up, they knew exactly who they were going after because they saw the same thing. Um, so yeah, that, that's the funny thing is, is we do feel like we're chasing our tails a little bit in the media because, you know, you, you, I mean, we have to do a three hour show every day. So I have to, I have to talk about something, um, hmm. but something, go, you know, something comes out and you're just like, okay, well, you know, there's the, the guy out of Minnesota that was uh, saying, uh, I think it's Paul Allen who said that, you know, that uh, Peyton was enamored. So I think that was the word yeah. he used enamored yeah. with JJ McCarthy. And so it was like, okay, well, we gotta, we gotta play the sound, you know, we gotta react to that. Um, but you also kind of like, okay, but why, why would that be out there? Right. And you have to ask yourself and, and, you know, you, you have to constantly push on that. But again, we chase our tails. Everybody else is doing it. Um, it still makes for fun discussion. And I think either way, even if it doesn't, in, in none of it ends up being true, I think it's fascinating to sort of put the pieces together and say, does this make sense? And then have that conversation. This is something we talked a lot about in our last episode. You talked about keeping like certain names, like the Pat Mahomes situation where they kept it very enclosed, like they weren't public at all about how their, their interest was so high in Mahomes. Do you think this is another situation, like it probably is, but do you think this is another scenario where all the all the eyes and the spotlight is on J.J. McCarthy right now, but we haven't really heard much about any interest in Bo Nix or a lot of uh, a lot of these other quarterbacks? Do you think that could be another scenario here? Because that's something even George Payton did with uh, PS2 a few years ago. Yep. Yeah, no, I, I, I do. I do think, well, and, and maybe that's some of that is just, you know, plan B, plan C, you know, kind of conversations too, right? They, they seem supremely confident they're going to get a quarterback here. And like I said, we know they're taking a quarterback. They're going to draft a quarterback. Um, that That's like sort of an undeniable fact. You know, we go, we go into some drafts some years saying, oh, should you draft a quarterback? Should you take a flyer on a guy, right? A project quarterback. And, and I, I argue most years you should, you know, you just never know if you're going to get a Brock Purdy and any sort of pops or, you know, you, you draft somebody, you know, later that that ends up, you know, being a, a long term backup for you. I mean, that's very valuable in today's NFL. I mean, 66 different yeah. quarterbacks played last year. A long term backup is a big deal. Uh, but but the point of it is, is, yeah, I, I mean, some of it could be just the, the multiple plans in place. Maybe they do. They really do love J.J. McCarthy. Right. There's lots of love there. It, it, it fits. It fits very nicely with what uh, you think he would want. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, you got to be prepared for the fact that quarterbacks could go way higher than you expect and, and you got to be ready to pivot. And so you might have to like several, even if you're in love with one. So steering away from the quarterback conversation, just quickly, uh, everyone knows I'm a big wide receiver guy. Everyone on Twitter knows that I'm the biggest Jerry Judy guy, but switching to the draft, it looks like we are going to be drafting a wide receiver, or at least I hope so. Are there any that comes to mind for the draft? Any college wide receivers that come to mind that Denver should be targeting? Well, you know, Malik Neighbors is pretty awesome. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, I, I, I want to tell you about this guy, Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, there, there, there's some really good ones. Um, uh, Adnine Mitchell is one of my favorite wide receiver yes. prospects. So good. And I – You'll see me retweeting a lot of Adonai Mitchell stuff. 
because I actually prefer him over Xavier Worthy. Um, but, you know, there, there's a lot of them. I mean, Malachi Corley would be really cool, right? I mean, we're talking about day two guys. Like, yeah, yeah. There, there's some really fun ones. I think, you know, I'm kind of excited about Luke McCaffrey. I, I want to see what he can do, you know, like uh, Brennan Rice. I mean, guys that are going to go in the third round or later. Um, hmm. I'm excited about those guys. I mean, but, you know, for the Broncos, boy, there's some really fun, you know, wide receivers here at the top. You know, we could get into a discussion, uh, an argument about, you know, especially after they moved on from Jerry Judy, if somehow a Roma Dunze pops in your lap at 12, you know, like, golly, I mean, it's really special talent there. Um, both the LSU wide receivers I love. I mean, it's just, there's, there's just so much, there's so much fun uh, in this, this wide receiver. And they're all different, you know, they're all, they're all, they're all so interesting and different. Um, you know, there's, there's speed, there's contested catch, there's, there's route running, you know, I mean, some guys are ready to hit the ground. I mean, those top three guys are for sure going to hit the ground running, but you know, people overlooking Brian Thomas, they're overlooking, in my opinion, I'd nine Mitchell. I think that guy does, he deserves to be in that conversation at the top. Um, so, you know, yes, I, I can talk about wide receivers to you all day. Um, it just, it dwarfs in comparison, right? I mean, and that, and, and I find that even on my show, right? It dwarfs in comparison to the quarterback conversation because it's like, who's throwing the ball? Like, okay, great. You got Roma Dunze at 12. Really, Jared Sims, the guy throwing the ball to Roma Dunze? Like, does that change the fortunes of this team? Maybe, maybe it makes them a little bit better. Um, but we've seen that before where you have a pretty good wide receiver group and you don't have good quarterback play and it doesn't seem to matter. Um, so that that's why it, it's a bummer to me because I'd love to get into some of these other positions and, and what I think would be fun for the Broncos. It just it just does dwarfs in comparison. So outside of the first round, I think we can all agree the Broncos have some holes to fill most definitely. And if you had to give three position groups aside from quarterback, what do you think um, are the three most important ones that you're hoping to see Denver upgrade through the draft? Mm, such a good question. Um, well, I, I, I'm not, not putting these in order, but mm -hmm. tight end, I feel like still needs to be looked at. Um yeah. And it, you look, I was, I was the dude screaming about Greg Dulcich when he was drafted. I was so excited and pumped about what he could be. Um, but, you know, it's the same thing like you saw with Jake Butt. I mean, it's just, you know, guys have a hard time staying healthy and that's just, that's just what it is. You know, hopefully this year he can. And they, they certainly turned the corner as an organization last year with the injuries. Uh, but, you know, that was one of the guys that, that unfortunately couldn't, couldn't figure it out. So um, not done with him, but I think tight end needs to, and especially I'd say with, with, the changes on special teams. I think tight end is going to be a, a higher premium now. I think you need, you need blockers. You need you need some some speed out there. A uh, combination of those things um, when it comes to the return game, the kickoff return game. I think it's going to be fascinating to watch how that how special teams and the kickoff rule changes how you construct your roster. Maybe you are keeping an extra tight end, keeping an extra linebacker, keeping extra safeties. Right? I mean, I, I wouldn't surprise me. Um, I'd say. Golly, you know, I, 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 you know, I was listening to George Payton talk yesterday, uh, re-listening to his presser, and he was talking about getting more athletic at the inside linebacker. Again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend a premium pick on an inside linebacker, but I agree that some speed there, especially considering the health of that group, right? You're not going to, you're not going to bank on Jonas Griffith playing the whole season. I love Jonas Griffith, but you're just not going to bank on that. Um, so inside linebacker, I think, is, is kind of interesting. Um, boy, I, I still worry about the run defense. Um, even with adding Roach, I, I still, you know, you were one of the worst run defenses in the league, and, and and who cares what you can do on offense and quarterback if you can't stop the run? You can't be in a shootout every every week, right? That's just not, that's not possible. Um, so defensive line. I'm literally listing every position because they actually kind of need a lot. Um but yeah, I mean, there's, I, I can keep going, you know, right. I mean, some people would argue offensive line center, certainly. Yeah. Right. I mean, we could be talking about, you know, adding more dynamic and running back. Um, but I, 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 I say those are the top three that jump out to me, you know, defensive line, interior defensive line. Um, I, I, you know, edge would be great too, but interior defensive line, I think linebacker and then, uh, and then a price of tight end. Yeah, I mean, you just like you know a little mix of everything: edge, inside, corn. I mean, just everything. But, yeah, uh, right. Uh, you know, Ryan, better than anybody. Social media is a very interesting place. It, it really is. They comes out. They come out with wild ideas, conspiracy, everything you can just think of. So I need your thoughts on this. It's been entertained, at least on social media. 
What are your thoughts on the idea of moving Patrick Sertan? Mm, I've gone back and forth on it, to be honest. Um, there are times when I'm like, okay, well, if it, if it meant that you didn't have to give up one of your future first, like let's just say in that conversation trading up to the top three or top four, mm-hmm. and that's going to cost you three firsts. Um, if it was the discussion of two firsts and Sertan versus three firsts and a day two pick, Man, I, you know, there, there's a discussion there. And 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 I think part of it is because he's got a contract due here rel- relatively soon. Yep. Worth it. Absolutely worth it. He's, he's one of the premier cornerbacks in the league. And, and his guy that, you know, he was drafted and had the kind of rookie season. You're thinking, boy, this is, you know, the next great Bronco and going to go in the ring of fame and Hall of Fame. Some, I mean, it, all those conversations are legitimate. He's that guy. Um, but then you, you kind of say, okay, well, with Pastor Tan, how many, you know, the, what the Vegas over under would have five and a half. With Pastor Tan, without Pastor Tan, how much does that change? Right? Like if they if they traded Pastor Tan tomorrow for a first and a second, if they if they could get that, and I'm not sure they could, but if they got that, does it go down to four and a half? I don't know if it, if it changes that much. Maybe, maybe just just opinion of the team, like because oh, it looks like they're really like, but then I think it would swing the other way once they got a quarterback. Yeah. You know, once they got one of the premier quarterbacks, it would pump pump up to six and a half and seven and a half and again you know you want to be higher than that but the point is 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 opinion of the team right perception of the team i don't think changes significantly with or without pastor tan and that's not to say he's not a special player because he absolutely is and i want him to be a bronco for life it's just one of those deals where you you just sort of have to weigh it out that's my opinion yeah if you can get your quarterback of the future by giving up ps2 Definitely an argument to be had. We talked a lot about it in the last show. If there's going to be any t- like any possible chance the Broncos trade into the top five or whatever it is, PS2 is probably going to have to be in the deal just because you have a Minnesota Vikings and other teams that do have uh, some relatively high draft capital, definitely higher than the Broncos. So, uh, you know, discussion to be had. But my last question for you, uh, kind of just a freebie. Um, it's been talked a lot about the last 24 hours. A lot of people are complaining about it, including the players as well. What are your thoughts on the NFL banning the hip drop tackle and then implementing this new kickoff rule? Yeah, I, I guess, and I don't mean to sound contrary, and I don't, I don't, I don't think it's as big a deal as, as everybody's making it out to be. To be honest, um, you know, I, we were talking to Ian Rapport yesterday, and and I think he kind of was in line with where I was thinking. I think most of this is going to be in the form of fines than calls on the field uh, early on, especially, right? I mean, maybe they make an emphasis in, in, in uh, preseason, right? I can see that. Um, but, you know, it, it's like, it, it's, it's like a lot of things, like it's going to be tough to officiate. And, 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 and if you're a referee, you're sure that that's what you saw. You know, I think if a player comes up hurt because of it, that'll make it easier, right? Like personal foul, like selling the personal foul, right? I mean, that, yeah. that could happen where, uh, you know, with the swivel and the landing on the back of the legs and all of a sudden Tyreek Hill is rolling around on the ground or, you know, Tony Pollard or Ryan Tannehill, you know, like you, you could sell it as an offensive player um, and maybe you get that call. Um, but, you know, they had 15 players hurt last year uh, as a result of this. Um, so it's not nothing. Um, I, I don't think it's as, as doom and gloom and let, you know, they're let's go to flag football. And I mean, <laughs> I think that's a little overblown. I think I think this this will be like anything else where, you know, the couple times it'll pop up and people will be like, oh, that's right. Um, but you know, like 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 helmet to helmet. Like I remember seeing somewhere that the, you know the instances of that even last year were like single digits. Like it's it's like you know you put these protections in so that you know that you can train it out of the game. Like that's why you're doing this is you're you want to train it out of the game, and you want to find better ways. And and I don't. I think if football fans who are freaking out about it really like search their soul, what's the most important is keeping the best players playing on the field at all times. Uh, it is a physical sport, um, but we want the highest level of football happening all the time. And to do that, you need your best players out there and you need them not hurt. Um, and if there's one more way that you think that you've done research and you think they can help that, then let's do it. I do think officials have a lot on their plates. And I think that that is a bit of a challenge that will always be a something for the NFL to be looking at. They need full-time officials. All those conversations are legit. Uh, I just think more of this is being made than there really should be. And then uh, the last one for me is, uh, do you think there's any surprise draft day trades that you're thinking about that are on the current roster? Maybe like a DJ Jones 
or someone else are on the roster that may be traded on draft day? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, DJ, uh, I guess Cortland Sutton, right, could be. Well, I mean, I think his contract could be difficult, but, yeah. um, you know, once again, if a, if a team on day two was looking for a, co- a wide receiver that they didn't get, um, you know, I mean, he was a guy that was rumored to be in, in trade talks for the last couple of years, right? Uh, the Broncos haven't moved him up to this point. Uh, maybe that's partly because of uh, his contract and the offers. Who knows? But, you know, the draft is one of those moments that happen. We see that all the time, right? I mean, receivers, especially uh, with the Tennessee Titans, uh, the Arizona Cardinals, and the Ravens, right, with uh, Hollywood Brown. I mean, it, it, it sort of happens. So that would be that would be a couple of the guys. I think DJ is a good one because because you thought you see where his contract is at and, and he's kind of due for a restructure. Garrett is another guy that keeps, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think they're going to do that at this point, but he's in the final year of his deal. Right. And that that's about that spot. And so if a team misses out on a left tackle and the Broncos feel like they can get, you know, maybe a couple of day twos or something like that. And they, they have somebody still on their board that they think could be comparable. Um, you know, that that's quite, that's a conversation. I mean, again, you're creating a massive hole there though. Right. So like, you got to know, if you move on from Garrett Bowles on draft night, uh, you're creating a pretty massive hole on your offensive line that you got to fix like now because you don't have anybody in the wings uh, that you can immediately just say, well, that's the guy. You know, I don't think Matt Pert is that guy um, right now. So, you know, I think that, 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 would be, that would be my top three uh, versions for sure. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be on the show. You guys can find Ryan Edwards at Redwards Radio over on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. Um, you could listen to KOA Sports 3 to 6 p.m. Mountain Time. Thank you for being on the show, man. It was, it was a great episode. Yeah, thanks for having me on. That awesome. was it for today's episode. If you're listening on YouTube, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, comment down below who you guys want next on the show. Let us know what you guys thought about all the topics and discussions we had about today and your opinions on them. With that being said, I'm your host, Samir Ferry, with my co-host Jordan Lopez and today's guest, Ryan Edwards. So next one, peace out, everybody.